In this step, the laser tube clamps, the two pieces that hold the laser tube, will be installed on the base of the gantry. So they're going to be located here and here. You'll need two quarter inch, one and a half inch screws and two cross dowels. In this step, the limit switch wiring for the x-axis will be wired to the laser controller. In addition, the y-axis limit switch will be wired through the gantry and through the cable carrier to the laser controller in this section of screw terminals. The design calls for a 93 or 94 inch cable, but um, the kit will most likely uh, include a few more inches in the cable. Strip the outer insulation. In this particular cable, you're gonna have some string. If you need to remove the outer jacket, uh, more of the outer jacket, you'll have a shielding and you'll have a shielding um, exposed wire that goes against the shielding throughout the entire cable. This will uh, take the noise and bring it to ground because we are going to connect this to ground as well. I'm gonna snip off any extra shielding on one side of the cable and only one end of the cable needs shielding or needs shield to be connected to ground. Since one end is gonna be connected to a limit switch, it's just a switch, so there's no need for the, for the actual um, shielding to be connected to the limit switch. And uh, all of the length of the cable will have shielding in it. All of the noise that may be collected near this cable will be brought to ground, which is at the laser controller. This side will be connected to the laser controller. Since there are two limit switches, um, they're both gonna share the same ground. So I'm not gonna connect, connect it yet until the next one is ready. So on this one, I might as well just snip the shield off since I'm gonna connect it directly to the limit switch. The limit switch accepts a quick disconnect terminal connector like this. And the connection is gonna be this one and this one. It's a little easier to see this one. These two connections, which is normally open, this, these two connections are normally closed, but this laser controller requires a normally open connection. Okay. Okay, there is a little hole at the end here. I'm not sure if it can be seen in the GoPro, but it's right in the corner inside. I'm gonna route the wire through there, and it's gonna come out the other side here. And then the wire is going to route through this little hole here in the tube clamp. And it's going to route through that same hole in the next tube clamp. And I'm going to extend this out here so it's a little bit easier to, to make it through the cable carrier. And now it's all the way through. I'm going to route this underneath the shaft and under the power supply. And I'm going to put this as far back as I can so I know how much, uh, how much extra I need. And I kind of want this one. I want to leave a little bit of slack here, so I'm going to keep this a little bit loose. And let's see how much left do we have, how much remaining. So we have quite a we have quite a bit remaining, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip some off. Now this is ready. Um, I can't really do anything yet until I uh, connect the other limit switch wire, so let me do that. You'll need approximately 25 inches from this limit switch to this part of the laser controller. We're gonna do the same thing as we did on the other end. It doesn't matter which connection this goes to because it's just um, either engaging it which is just making a touch or which is this in this state and when it's released it's just let go but i still like to put the black on the common this is the common lead here and the red on the normally open lead i'm probably going to snip it to this location I'm going to be using wire ferrules to make a, a nicer and cleaner connection with the terminals. 
So all of the black and the shielding wires go together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those together now and find the right size wire. Feral, probably a red. Let's see if that fits. Yeah, that's good. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. A black wire ferrule. And I'm just gonna crimp this ferrule. And now we have a good secure connection. Now I'm gonna take the other two, the, the two reds, and I'm gonna use a white ferrule. Okay, all the connections are secure. And this is the, the terminal connector that we'll be using here. So there's a ground, there's an ELX minus, and there's an ELY minus. Those are the two I'm gonna use because they're gonna be, they're gonna serve as my home positions. So this is ground, this is X, and this is Y. And I kind of have to now determine where my X and Y axes are. So if I'm looking at the, the work in this orientation, I'm gonna want my X to be in this motion, X being positive that way, and then Y being positive that way. So when this home's here and this home's here, this will be X zero, Y zero, Y will go up, X will go to the right. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be my X limit switch and this will be my Y limit switch. You could make the argument that the front is over here, which in most machines it is, and this is the zero zero uh, point. Um, that can still be done using some configurations in the controller, um, but the control panel on this machine is gonna be here, facing you in this direction. So you, you can do the movements and things and you're still gonna be actually standing in this location and watching your machine um, travel over here. Um, so I'm gonna set it up so this is the X and this is the, the Y. So I'm gonna look at my wires. This is gonna be the X because it's going to this limit switch. This is gonna be the Y which is going to the limit switch over here. So, and this is ground. So this is the ground position here. So I'm gonna do that first. And this is the X, so this will go first in the next position. You wanna make sure that everything is tight once you've tightened it down and it's not coming out. And now for the final one, which is the Y. Okay, so I'm just gonna bend these wires this way so they're not gonna be in the way when I plug it in. Get it into position and then shove it into the connection. Okay. We're not gonna be using any more of these terminals, so we won't have to worry about trying to make them fit and, and dealing with the space constraints. In this step, the power for both drivers coming from the 36 volt power supply will be completed. A cable with two conductors will be used. This is an 18 gauge cable. And it's actually easy to move the insulation back and forth with this. There's no shielding in this. I'm gonna connect the power supply side first. Okay, so I put, the, I put this terminal on this side Black is going to V minus, red is going to v, v plus. And on this end, I used red ferrules, wire ferrules, and I put the black to the ground, which is the V minus here, and the red to the V, to the v plus, which is V plus here. Now I'm going to connect the um, power to the Y axis driver in the same way. Red is gonna be wired to V plus. And black will be wired to V minus. So we have V plus V plus. This is also a V plus terminal stated by this V plus label, V minus, which is V minus V minus, and this is another V minus. Now let's 
figure out what length we need for this. So we don't need too much here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to this point. I'm gonna use the red ferrules since it's 18 gauge. And the ground terminal, black to the ground. Test for strength. And red to V plus. Okay, so now both drivers have power. 